I reviewed your portfolio, Aryan, and it's very impressive. The three D models look great. Very creative work. Thank you. And one last thing, how will you create the flat pattern for this? Um, the uh, flat pattern for this one, you mean flat. So I probably use a uh, flex. I would put one plane here and one here, like, like that, because you can move the planes and then I try to bend it 90 degrees, open it up. If this is the flat. Mm -hmm. What you just saw happen here happens often. Good engineers who are good at CAD with shiny portfolios who can almost model anything. They are not trained to design components that are supposed to be manufactured. But that's not gonna be you because in this video, I am going to give you what you need to demonstrate your skills starting with sheet metal. Of course, it's a deep topic and it's not gonna cover it all, but it's a start. So let's go. 68% of the jobs, they require you to know DFM, design for manufacturing. That means the component you design in SOLIDWORKS at some point needs to be manufactured and your company that is hiring you is going to pay for that. The team you're working in is going to wait for you, rely on what you design for weeks on end. When you place the order, which is $100,000 and you go home, you sleep at night and the team says, okay guys, in four weeks, we're gonna get the component that you designed and we can take it from there. The project goes, we are on schedule. Next week they say, oh, in two weeks we get it. In one week we get it. In three days we get it. And every night you go home, you're gonna have to ask yourself, what if the component I designed is not gonna fit? What if it's not right? So in order to to skip all of that, it would be good to get familiar with different DFM skills. Starting with sheet metal, it's one of the most common manufacturing methods out there due to its cheap manufacturing costs. Now, to help you demonstrate your manufacturing knowledge in your next interview and pass your test, this is how you do it. First, if they ask you how to create the flat pattern, you need to understand what a flat pattern is. So this is a bent sheet metal component. It used to be a flat sheet metal. So if I had, for example, enough power to just bend this and make it flat and bend the other one and also make it flat, I'd end up with a flat sheet of metal, which is representing the initial state that this component was in. Since you don't have that and all you were given is a component, what you need to do is to design that in SOLIDWORKS to create that flat pattern. That's what I'm going to show you today. But, but, designing a sheet metal component does not start with you. And I'm gonna keep that for the end of the video. It's essential to know how you should start modeling a sheet metal. As I promised, we're gonna start from here. I don't wanna start from the beginning. This sheet metal is from a singular sheet of metal with a thickness of 3.2. So instead of going to the features tab and extruding this, which is not what we want, we go to the sheet metal tab and we select base flange, then we select the sketch. Over here, I can change the thickness of my sheet, which is 3.2. And one more important thing is the bending radius, which is the radius you have over here. In this case, it's five. So I'm going to click OK. This is the base sketch, as you can see here. Now we want to go do this one. This is 50 millimeters thick and 96 millimeter tall. And it's called a flange. And you can see it here. We have edge flange, 50 and 96. Then I'm gonna draw a sketch, just like a normal solid body design. I'm gonna draw three lines, use my smart dimension to assign the value and go to features tab and use extruded cut. So sheet metal is very, very close to normal component. And I wanna also show you something else. Take a look at what this sketch is supposed to cut. You can see this, this bit should go away, but when I click okay, it won't. It goes in a flat way. Why? Because you can not cut a sheet metal at an angle. I'm not saying you can't. This is not the right practice. That's what I'm saying. After here, we have another flange starting from here, going 50 millimeters to the right. But as you can see, it's taller. We already are at 96. We don't want to go any higher. So I just change it to this mode and the height is inclusive and it's 50. And there is a rectangle here. So this is what we have. And going to the sheet metal tab, clicking on flatten, we get the flat pattern over here. I can go ahead and save this component as DWG or DXF, doesn't matter. You can see that and click OK. This is it. This is the cutting path for the laser or water jet, whatever they use to cut this base. Then they use different sets of machines to bend it. To know where to bend it, we have to 
create a drawing for this, a 2D drawing, bring the flat pattern, which we see over here. We don't want to drag any of them, just a flat pattern. And you can see we have two lines here. These are called our bending lines, upward 90 degrees radius five. We could just leave it like this, or we could go to annotations and bring the bend table, select this and turn that into a table. Then we have the fixed face. We have line A and bending line B. And in a table, we see A is upward 90 degrees five, so is B. So you finish your drawing and you send this to your manufacturer. But we want to go to that point that I saved for last. Starting a sheet metal is not knowing what you want to do. You should know what you want to do, but that's not the first step. The first step is to find your manufacturer first. Why? Because not every sheet metal manufacturer can manufacture every single thing you design. Maybe they have a limit on the thickness that they can work with. Maybe they have a limit on the bending radiuses. You ask them, hey, I want to design something with bending radius of 0.5. Can you do that for me? If they say no, then you cannot work with them unless you want to spend a lot of money and ask them to create a custom tool for you. Now, let me just give you an example. I'm going to go to comacut.com. Scrolling down to the middle of the page, I see a section of our capabilities. Looking here, they have laser cutting, sheet metal bending, threading, and chamfering, CNC turning, surface finishing. I'm interested in sheet metal bending. In this case, I go here and I can read. They can do any angle. The radius they can do is from one millimeter to 16 millimeters. Materials they can cover is aluminum will start da, 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 and multiple bands. They can do anything. They have listed their tolerances too. So you pick your manufacturer first, you ask their capabilities. So you know what is possible. What are the typical limitations a manufacturer have? And Comacut is the company that is sponsoring this video. And they have sent me a lot of these components to work with. The components are are good and it's nice to order at least one thing that you design to understand the differences between what you can actually design in SOLIDWORKS or whatever CAD package you use and the actual component that comes out of it and add it to your portfolio. That would be a nice thing to back you up the next time you go to a job interview. And to get you started, if you use the code below this video, you get 20% off your first order. Now, if you want to learn sheet metal in SOLIDWORKS, click on the video on the right. And if if you like this video, I'm sure you're going to love the video on the left where I use one of the sheet metal components that they send me and use the 2D paper scanner to bring it into SOLIDWORKS. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It would help me a lot. Thank you very much for watching.